Hello, this is Wine Blast Live, our short and sweet version of the podcast. Uh, I'm Susie Barry, he's Peter Richards, we're both masters of wine and we have been asked a question. Yes, Andreas Tischhaus has got in touch from Switzerland uh, as follows. He writes, many good wines, especially Bordeaux, come in wooden boxes. Uh, is there a functional reason for this? Is it more balanced microclimate in terms of temperature and humidity uh, or is this complete insanity? Ooh, wine and insanity. Now there's an interesting area to explore. <laughs> yeah, indeed. See what we've done? Seamless. Uh, now, wine boxes might seem like a bit of a niche uh, question, but we put this out there on social media and we got a huge response, didn't we? We did uh, indeed. We what did. we did then was to ask questions of the people who sell wine in wooden boxes and we got intriguing answers on that front too. Didn't we, we did, we did. So there's a big old story to be told here, but we will try and keep it short. So let's start by saying wooden boxes have traditionally been used as cases for posh wines. Um, they're usually made from pine, uh, stamped with the wine brand on the end, sometimes on the top, mm. mostly on the end, isn't it? Yeah. Um, they're nailed together, they're pretty heavy, and essentially they're more sturdy and more luxury looking than cardboard. Yeah, and we're surrounded, for those of you who can't see this, who are just listening to it, we are surrounded by wine boxes. You're, you're, sort of, wine boxes you're, you're dancing around with them, aren't you? I am, I'm waving them around and stuff uh, gleefully. Um, one of the reasons they use is, of course, sort of tradition and, and image, if for want of a better word. Um, you know, they look reassuringly expensive, mm, don't they? They um, do. And they kind of reinforce that message you were talking about, you know, this is posh wine. And I think that resonates with people. So um, Matt, for example, tweeted in, uh, cardboard is a carrier, a wooden box is a memory. Oh. Matt's a poet, isn't he? Yeah. Georgie describes them as magical. Yeah, but there is, there is also a practical side to it. Mm. You know, wooden boxes are more robust, so bottles inside are less likely to break. Um, David tweeted... Yeah, how he'd seen a 12 bottle cardboard box of wine fall off an HGV and boom. But when a wooden case of wine fell off, it just bounced and not one single bottle was broken. Yeah, don't try this at home, kids. Um, <laughs> I'm not but... sure we're going to give it a go. <laughs> not with a posh wine. The thought of that cardboard box breaking just makes me wince. Oh, no, yeah. but, well, um, the wooden box, trusting that. I know, but tying into this, you know, wines and wooden boxes are often uh, fine wines designed to age. Now, if you stick a cardboard box in a damp cellar, it is going to fall to pieces. Uh, but a wooden box is altogether, you know, just sort of more robust, more stackable uh, and storable as a container over time. Uh, Andrew tweeted, think of them as a portable wine cellar. Mm. The issue is, of course, that they're heavy. So that generates carbon emissions in shipping. Um, they also use precious uh, resources, mm -hmm. they take energy to manufacture, and they are not easily recyclable, let's face it. Not recyclable, but they are reusable. They are. Now, now, we had uh, quite a few creative ideas on this front from people on social media saying uh, how they'd, or what they'd reuse them for. Uh, things like... You're far more creative than us. I know, I know. I've got the kindling in ours. <laughs> That's it. Literally shelves, the the fire. shelves for books, glasses and vinyl. Mm -hmm. There you go, way cooler than that. Uh, storage for vegetables <laughs> in the larder or even entire kitchen cabinets. Uh, fire starters, uh, wall oh, coverings, uh, planters for mm -hmm. herbs uh, and flowers. Apparently the most bespoke Zoom stand you're ever going to see. I'd like to see. We've done that. that. Uh, floor stacks in wine shops, of course, uh, lamp or TV stands. Uh, finally, even a funeral casket for a small but beloved pet. Oh. Oh dear. <laughs> anyway, people sent in some brilliant photos and we'll put those on our show mm, notes. Okay. Um, cats feature. Cats do feature, don't they always? I, do they? Probably, yeah. <laughs> they, they do seem to. Uh, we'll also add Keith's drill bit holder. Uh, he said, and I quote, I know. I've got too many drill bits. You never have too many drill bits, Keith. And we have Tom, Tom's red scooter as well with a repurposed wine box painted bright scarlet on the front. And he said, for shopping at speed. There we <laughs> the go. Mind, the mind boggles so many questions. Um, but, but compounding that, we actually even got sent that video, I don't know if you've seen it, of Boris Johnson being asked what he does to relax. And he said he, makes, he makes models of buses. Oh. Uh, out of wooden wine box dividers. We've oh, got some please. here, you can maybe hold one up. Um, and he, he, and I quote, he paints the pit passengers enjoying themselves on this wonderful bus. Uh, should we be worried? Should we be concerned? Very, yes. 
uh, and on the subject of bizarre tangents, uh, let's move on. Uh, we had a lovely thread, didn't we, actually, about Sainsbury Supermarket and wine did, boxes. Did, yeah. did, didn't we? So, so Justin wrote to say when he was a Sainsbury's wine buyer, they got in a wine that came in a wooden box, but sales were really slow. They then did a store visit and realised what the problem was. The health and safety authority in store had advised against opening the wooden case and I quote, in the absence of an official tool and a guide to safe opening practice. <laughs> What's wrong with a screwdriver? Isn't it? Oh no, no, apparently the screwdriver was ruled out as a splinter risk. <laughs> They didn't consider it, but there you go. But there was there was a, actually a brilliant finale to this story because really, it did make me laugh. This because Melissa, who worked at Sainsbury's back in the day, and um, now very senior in the wine world, as is um, Justin. Yeah. yeah, as is as is Justin. Um, but she added that wooden what wooden box wine sales were very good in her store because <laughs> her colleague in the wine aisle had a hook instead of a left hand, which meant opening boxes was easy. She added. He was great at deterring shoplifters too. <laughs> we all need wine superpowers, Excellent. don't we? Uh, don't anyway, moving on, uh, we also asked some, as I said, some producers about this too. And now Louis Jadot in Burgundy have used uh, wooden boxes for the prestige that they confer. Uh, their best wines have traditionally been shipped in wooden cases. Um, but now, interestingly, they're moving away from wood. Uh, only Grand Cru will be put into wooden boxes from the 2020 vintage. Uh, previously, Premier Cru were as well. Uh, that's entirely for environmental reasons to save on resources. Mm, that's why there's not much Grand Cru, is there? So hopefully yeah. that would save quite yeah. a bit. Uh, yeah. But even more newsworthy is Chateau Langoa Barton in Bordeaux, where Damien Barton Sartorius is planning to move the entire 80,000 bottle production from wood to cardboard boxes purely for sustainability. Mm. Now Damien is a young guy, um, very environmentally minded isn't yeah. he, um, and one idea he's had is to offer people the choice. So you could have a, a wooden box rather than a cardboard box for Langoa, but you pay extra and the mm. extra you pay goes to an environmental charity. Yeah, that's a really interesting idea. And, uh, yeah. Apparently, uh, just for information, a wooden box is worth around, costs around five to seven euros and a cardboard box about half that. Although, mm. you know, I don't think producers are moving away from them for, for cost reasons at all. No, uh, it's, no. It's, and, and, and when you're at that kind of level of, of pricing exactly. of wine, but five the, the, five euros, two fifty. Other concerns like yeah. the environmental ones. Yeah, yeah, anyway, yeah. Andreas, we hope we've managed to answer your question and provided a little bit of entertainment uh, along the way. Uh, I think we've established that there are functional reasons uh, for wine boxes, but I think more about sort of robustness and stackability than anything else. Um, mm. And image or tradition is important as well. Yeah, it is. But but you know, but as for the future of wine boxes, I mean, who knows? I mean, can we not come up with a better solution mm. that's modern? and sustainable, that isn't heavy, that doesn't use nails, that isn't quite so hard to open. The dreaded that... splinter risk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or well, perhaps, you know, everyone, as you say, could be offered a choice. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Anyway, uh, we'll see. Anyway, thank you for, to everyone who, who got involved in this discussion, which is really fun. And of course, thank you to you for tuning in. Uh, if you've got any views that you'd like to share with us, we would absolutely love to hear from you. Uh, until next time, cheers. <laughs>